Hey, hi, Angel here. Thanks for stopping by. I got a little bit of a hoarse throat because uh, I was singing all weekend long with, well, not all weekend long, but every day of the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, with some of my favorite musicians and then uh, a new musician friend that I had not got to perform with before, who is Angelo Moore from Fishbone. I'm so stoked uh, that I got to work with him because really just a phenomenal performer and human being. So <clears throat> bear with me. I'm a little hoarse and uh, I got practice tonight and a gig on Friday. But anyway, it'll, it'll all be okay. <laughs> um, ironically, what I wanted to talk about today is yelling. <laughs> I, I've had some friends of mine get into some yelling tiffs lately, uh, a couple different sets of friends of mine that, that have partnerships and it's brought to mind watching that and listening to the results of that, that, uh, anytime we're yelling at somebody that we love, like in anger yelling, it's one thing if you're yelling a song like I was and going so hoarse, but if you're yelling in anger at somebody you love, there's a good chance you're triggered. You're not probably fully conscious or aware of, of what you're actually feeling. So you're just kind of projecting out and, uh, you know, out of control basically. And <clears throat> that kind of out of control behavior in intimate relationships can do so much damage, not just to the relationship between the two people who are yelling at each other, but, um, to everybody, to their relationships with everybody around them who witnesses that out of control behavior and goes like, Oh, Hey, wow. I didn't realize you were so out of control, you know, and, um, and I'm, I have been out of control myself many a time in this life. And I'm, I expect I probably will yell again in anger. Although I hope, you know, I can hope not. And I'm really, am. uh, it's been a while since I yelled at anyone in anger, but it has happened. I have yelled at people in anger. And so I can speak from that experience and know that that in those instances, I'm out of control and I'm not my best self. And I'm not, um, you know, I'm not, you almost always, it damages the relationship. Now, every now and then things need to come to a head. And so, you know, you could go with the things happen in their own due course for a reason. I don't know about, I kind of have my, my qualms with that uh, idea of everything happens for a reason. But I do think in some way we, you know, we line up with what we're ready for. We have the experiences we're ready for and that we're, and that we're, um, setting in motion through our actions. So if you're in a relationship where you yell a lot or you get yelled at a lot, then perhaps there's a lesson in that, that you're needing to learn or something, you know, in, uh, some, maybe it's to love yourself better and not put up with being yelled at. In my case, that's been a lot of it, I think. And I still, I still struggle with that, but I've come a long way. I've been in some relationships where people yelled at me regularly. And I finally, a while back, just decided you know, even, even just, um, friendships and business partnerships, if you're the kind of person that needs to go out of control and raise your voice at me, then I'm not the kind of person that wants to have a relationship with you. Um, that's the conclusion I've come to. And, and you know, it's okay. That's all okay. Some people like to yell at each other, I guess. I think to me, that's a real low vibration, low level. And as I said, I think it actually ultimately really damages the respect that you um, have between, if you're a yeller, <laughs> you're going to lose respect. Uh, you might think that yelling promotes respect. It seems like sometimes when we yell, we think we're going to be heard more or somehow, you know, be the top dog in the, in the discussion, somehow get more respect from, from raising our voice. But the, but we all know from experience, if somebody yells at you, you don't really hear them. You just hear them that they're yelling at you and that they don't respect you and you're and you generally lose a little respect for them back, you know? So, um, yeah, yelling doesn't work and yelling, um, or rarely works, I should say. And yelling is, a <clears throat> usually a real tr sign that you're triggered, that you're having an emotional reaction to something else that even doesn't probably have anything to do with the situation. And instead of facing whatever that is, like maybe, um, you know, your mom or your dad or your grandparent or your brother, or your sister, or your third grade teacher really hurt your feelings one time. And instead of dealing with that, 
you kind of just stuffed that emotion. And then now, whenever somebody says something that sounds a little bit, bit like whatever that was that, that you stuffed down, you know, that triggers that same emotion that you tr stuffed down, like, oh, there's a hand, just a handful of very common ones, like you're not good enough or I'm not good enough, um, you know, I'm not worthy, I don't deserve love, there's something wrong with me, I must be broken. These are all very common internal dialogues that we humans tend to have as a response, especially when we're young, to somebody putting us down or not including us or saying something mean or sometimes trying to say something helpful and we just take it in a weird way, maybe because we've already got a trigger in there. Um, but you know, as children, our parents and the people in our lives don't always do a perfect job. And in fact, I don't think anybody does a perfect job. And some people do a pretty fucked up job sometimes. And so um, we end up with these various wounds as children. And if we don't if we don't learn to recognize, face them, and heal them, then they sneak out in, in opportune moments when we're triggered with those we love, usually more, you know, can happen with strangers too, but it, I, I'm noticing that those closest to us often have the ability to trigger those the most because we have that emotional connection and that um, it makes us more emotionally invested and so easier to be emotionally triggered because we care about the relationship. And therein lies the irony in why I'm wanting to talk about this. Because it's those relationships that we care about, those relationships that we want to keep, it, it, um, it would behoove us all, it seems to make sense to me, to try to work on recognizing when we're triggered, each individually, and taking a pause, taking a walk, stop the argument, stop yelling and just breathe say hey you know what i need a minute i'm gonna come let's come back to this when we've calmed down whatever it takes you know the context will dictate what the better move is but i guarantee yelling is almost never almost never the best move in a trying to work out a disagreement or come to an understanding because we can't hear each other as well when we yell ironically we can't understand each other as well. When we're emotionally triggered, we're just reacting to that emotion and, uh, and often start yelling back or, you know, if we're uh, not being conscious about it. So that's what I've been dealing with lately in myself. And then of course, in true universe fashion, I'm seeing that in the relationships around me as I've been working on that more, recognizing that more in myself, trying to recognize when I'm triggered, if I find myself being emotionally you know, responding from a heightened emotional place that's not proportional, that's disproportionate to the actual experience or actual scenario that's going on or isn't in alignment with the fact that I'm dealing with somebody that I love and that I want a relationship with and that I want to, or that I just want to communicate with in some way. Um, you know, realizing that being emotionally triggered is never going to help my ability to be, to communicate effectively and appreciating that, that, you know, those people close to us, closest to us often do put up with us being emotionally triggered and help us work through that. But that doesn't mean that we should get in the habit of allowing ourselves to be just unchecked, out of control, triggered around the people we love because somehow we think that, um, that because we're in a relationship with them, that, that they owe us the tolerance of being out of control. I think, you know, it's great when we have some of that to give to each other. But on the other hand, it's uh, sometimes enabling because really it's best if we just, you know, cut that shit out the sooner the better, right? That's my two cents <laughs> for today. If you're a yeller, cut that shit out man. calm down, take a breath, grow up, go back and visit where that feeling really comes back from. And now that you're a grown up, turn around and face it. You know, when you were one or two or three or six or 12, maybe you didn't have the tools, maybe you didn't have the maturity, maybe you didn't have the, the skill set at all to navigate that in a, in a way that you could learn or, or just at least not cause more damage. But now you do, you're a grown up, right? If you're on the internet, you probably at least, if not a grown up, if you're listening to me, you're, you're, 
getting close to being a grown-up because time flies. So <clears throat> even if you're an immature grown-up like me, you can still do a better job at communicating with the people you love and, um, yeah, not re not acting from a triggered place, but rather from a calm, loving, compassionate place if you're wanting to communicate effectively with people you love. That's my two cents. I appreciate you visiting with me. I'd love to know your comments about yelling. Are you a yeller? Have you ever yelled? How does it feel to you when you get yelled at? Um, I think most of us hate it, but then again, some people seem to like to do it. I think I've had relationships where I was um, out of control yeller for, in my younger years for quite a bit. And now I've been single for a long time because I'm really trying to get better at maintaining my own control and loving myself before I go um, imposing my bad habits into anyone else's world. <laughs> and not to say that I'm all bad habits at all. I got lots of great stuff too. So uh, I just also, you know, I like being single lately. So there's that. Cheers. Ciao. Till next time. Peace, prosperity, and possibilities.